Hi guys, my name is Amrita. I'm here to talk to you about the ORE examination. So ORE if, um, is the full form for Overseas, no, it is a short form for Overseas Registration Examination. This is conducted by the GDC and uh, this is an examination for all the candidates who have passed their BDS or equivalent outside Europe or the UK. So this examination is conducted in two parts. Part one, wherein they test your theoretical knowledge and part two, wherein they conduct your practical knowledge. So today I'm going to talk to you about the ORE part two examination. ORE part two examination is conducted in, on three days and it has got four parts. The first day, what is the, the examination is called as an OSCE or um, it's also called as Objective Structured Clinical Examination. And on second day, we have something called as Dental Management Exam. And third day, uh, the, it's called as a Dental Treatment Planning and the Medical Emergency. So it's a combined, um, they combined two sessions in one day. So let me start with the OSCEs. Um, so OSCEs is, every OSCE stay, uh, lasts for about five minutes. And you will have about 17 OSCEs and you will have, if I'm not wrong, a, around three to four rest stations. So OSCEs are divided into three different uh, types. The first one is called as a written OSCEs, wherein they will give you clinical scenarios. It could be anything. They, will, they could ask you to um, make a diagnosis out of what you see or photograph. Or it could be um, a prescription writing or a referral writing or it could be to identify instruments or there are so many things. There are so many questions that can be asked in the written part. Uh, the second part, the second um, part is the oral OSCEs wherein there will be a few actors and uh, they will tell you certain problems and you are expected to either take a history or um, give your diagnosis and or sometimes you have to do give your management of the case. The third type of OSCE is the uh, skilled OSCEs. Now in skilled OSCEs there are different types which can come like for example you can you, you may be asked to take an x-ray or rubber dam suturing or there are may, there are different types and I'm sure as, as soon as you get started with this you will get to know what are the different types of OSCEs which can be asked for the examination. Now, this was day one. So as I said, each OSCE will last for five minutes and they will start by ringing a bell and at four and a half minutes, there will be another bell which will tell you that you just have 30, um, 30 seconds left. Um, so you have to complete your OSCEs in the five minutes, okay? And after every five to six session, after five to six OSCEs, you will have a rest wherein you will not be allowed to write or do anything. It's an absolute rest time. You can um, just relax and calm your mind and probably prepare yourself for the oncoming OSCEs. So this OSCEs would last about, the examination would be for about one and a half, two hours. And um, after, after your OSCEs, after you're done with your OSCEs, uh, the next day, next examination would be your dental mannequin now this is a tricky bit of the exam um, because they will test your hand skills you were given three hours and you will be given four exercises um, so before you start your examination I'm sure you guys will all be well prepared there are a few courses which you can all you can um, attend and once you attend these courses, they would it would definitely give you an insight as to how you are supposed to prepare yourself for your exam. And of course, you're going to have your own clinic on, a clinic of your own at home where you have your compressor, your mannequin, your phantom heads, your handpiece. And yeah, as I said, it's like a mini clinic. You can just uh, spend a lot of time in your clinic helping yourself getting get to get better during this exam. Um, one most, I would say the key to this examination is your confidence and how you control your nerves. It's very important to be 
relaxed and i know it's a very difficult thing but let me tell you that this is one of the most important things for you to pass your exam being confident and able to control yourself um so this was about uh, the dental mannequin and um, so each exercise as i said you would be given two majors and one minor and um, the majors can be anything from a cavity prep to a crown prep and the minors could be sm small things like veneers or it could be your impression exam there are a list of things of course which are available um if you can it, it would be of great help if you could join facebook groups there are groups like ORE part 2 examination groups mr dental groups these are all the groups which you can join for your preparation so th this is about the day 2 dental mannequin examination um so after you're done with this exam you are after, after day 2 i think you're so exhausted that you don't want to do anything and sometimes sometimes people are so demotivated to not give the the day 3 because you think your exam didn't go so well but let me tell you that um you may expect really high of yourself but there are a set of standards which are already placed and if you meet up to that standard there's there's always a chance that you can pass so don't get disheartened after day 2 okay now let's go to day 3 day 3 i think this would be the more relaxing day of the exam where you have your dental treatment planning and your medical emergencies so dental treatment planning um there will be an actor there will be two examiners who will be judging you and uh, you obviously you start taking the case history um you start off with the oh, chief complaint the history history of present illness the medical history dental history um and then you come to a diagnosis where um you will also be given a few artifacts like your cast photographs and uh, your tests some of the like vitality tests and a few things which i can discuss later on um so once you get all these you get your diagnosis and then there would um and then after that you're expected to do your treatment planning um so each each of the exam is divided into times for example your case history would last for about 10 11 minutes after which is your um diagnosis where you um where you will be given um i'm not sure of that let's cut that um and overall so once you finish your treatment planning the next part is your management so you write up everything how you're going to manage your emergency phase and initial phase and your um phase 3 and all that and after that there's something called as your oral phase where you're supposed to explain to the patient as to how what is the cause of your problem and how you're going to manage it so i would say uh, dental treatment planning is all about conversation um it's good to practice with somebody or it's always good to improve yourself listen to yourself how you are presenting um you can record your voice you can talk in front of the mirror these are some some good things that you can do so once this is done and one of the most important thing is you you have to make sure that your patient is satisfied the patient is confident that your you being her or his dentist are able to carry out duties well and in the best interest of the patient so if at all there needs to be a referral definitely go ahead with that because it's important to refer your patient sometimes not everything can be done on your own um so once this is done your dental treatment is planning is dental treatment planning examination is over then comes your medical emergency so your medical emergency can be taken before your dental treatment planning exam or it can be taken afterwards it depends on your slot when you are assigned to now the medical emergency is divided into two parts one is uh, the scenario based questions and another one is your basic life support so scenario based questions uh, there are a set of uh, medical emergencies which you can always go for a few courses um, i'm sure they're all uh, available out there for you um do attend those courses it's important because they would give you very good ideas to how you you can manage each of the probable cases that come in your way then next going to your bls basic life support um 
you are um, there would talk of, there would be two examiners who are examining you again and um, each of them um, yeah they, you, they would expect you to do the BLS they, they, there would be a mannequin there would be a dummy there on the floor and then you're expected to do your BLS um, I think one one of the shortcomings what I have heard from my friends and um, I think personally is sometimes um, people forget to lift up the chin of the mannequin it is so important because um, for your BLS to be successful the chest has to rise and if you do not lift up your chin then there is a chance that the chest won't rise and you may not be successful with that so that's a that's a very important tip um, apart from that I think this is a very doable exam. 